Hello, I'm Rubal Khan from KC Tech School, and the following video tutorials have been created to guide you to use VRVEX, a free virtual robotics programming platform created by VEX Robotics. Hello and welcome to tutorial 12. Alright, now if you still remember the challenge in tutorial 11, at the end, I, we talked about the challenge and I said the challenge was to get the um, three discs of each color and bring them back to the square zone. And I gave you a hint, I said it would be good to create two functions. One would be to get the three discs in return. Again, the first one first, and then second, and then third. The other function was to turn right, try forward, eight, four steps, which is 800 mils, and then turn left 90 degrees. And that's because that those two functions were going to be repeated. So that function of collecting all the three discs would be repeated twice. Similarly, the turning, driving forward and then turning would have to be repeated twice, down here and then down here, when you are turning to go towards the green box. Okay, so these are the two functions that I talked about defining. So I basically repeated them twice. So I, the first thing is get the three discs, return, then you turn, drive, turn again, and you do that again because you can collect these three discs, turn right, drive, turn, and then the last one you just get your three discs and return. Let's have a close look at how the functions actually look like. So get three discs and return. I'm going to move this away. Basically, similar to something that we did in the previous tutorial, I created a variable called distance. I set the value of the variable to 800 first, and then I linked that variable to how much the robot was going to drive forward. Because remember I said the, ro the program actually doesn't know what distance is. you got to link it to the right kind of statement here. So drive forward for distance. So distance here became attached to how much it was driving forward or backward. So you started with 800 and then you obviously magnetize, you pick it up, you go back the same distance and then you, you demagnetize at the same time you change your distance by 400, so become 1002 the next run, and then 1006 in your next run. Okay, so that's that gets repeated three times because you got to collect three discs. And then your function for drive turn, uh, turn drive forward and turn is basically turn right 90 degrees, drive forward 800. That's four steps. Turn left 90, and then you're ready to do the next one. All right, and let's let's see how all these actually played out. Okay, again wouldn't have played out too badly if not I'm, I'm probably not gonna run this so let's see how this played out okay okay so there you go the first one and obviously I set my velocity to 100% but that again is gonna change very soon when I go to the next tutorial okay setting drive velocity to 100% works well when you're not using your sensors when you need to use your sensors and detect things it's probably better to go at default normal speed or even slower if possible. Again, you see that knocking on uh, that that's 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 not fair. See that that got knocked out a bit. Okay, that happens randomly sometimes, but let's try that again. Shouldn't happen. There you go. Yeah, there's a bit of physics built in somehow. I, I realized one out of twenty times that happens, and it just chose to happen just now. Okay. See that disc comes in the way a bit, but should be okay. Keeps moving to the right for some reason. It's all right so far. So it's gonna turn right. First one. Second one. And then. Terrible. All right, so done. Good. All right, so that if you've done it, great job. All right. Like I said, one out of twenty times it might get knocked by one of those discs for some reason. I don't know why. Like that happened out of like the last twenty times, it never happened, and that happened just now. But it worked the next time I ran it. Okay, now let's look at the next task that we have. Okay, the next task that we have is basically this. I'm going to explain the task first, and then I'm going to look at some of the different. Um, Things that we can use okay and this is probably slightly more complicated than the other tutorials in terms of understanding the blocks 
and the logic behind it but you should be better now now that you've covered stuff like variables and function definition so if you scroll down get the disk maze this is what you're supposed to do okay so this is your disk maze okay and you've got different stations down here so if I, this is this is the view from the angle robot starts here you're supposed to go to different stations if I'll go to the top view these are your different stations you've got a green blue a lot of green and blues and only one red okay your task is to go to each station go to the green one first and then whichever station you you might want to choose or however you actually program your robot to so it will follow a certain logic and will go to different stations and you got to visit all the stations one two three four five six seven eight before you come to the red the moment it comes to red station it's got to stop so that's what you got to do and you can't define exactly what distance to move so you can't like okay move 1008 turn right move 400 turn left move you can't do that okay you've got to use your sensor to detect the color so that's what this task is about so we're going to use our sensors for the first time okay so let's look at this angle we're going to use a sensor to detect the color of each station okay again you might use either the front eye sensor you've got if you look at your robot you've got a down eye and you've got a front eye which can actually detect color it can also detect the distance okay but we're gonna go for color now sorry not this one talk about this this one okay so let's go back yeah okay and at each station you've got like a small colored mat and you've got disc that's vertical so that's horizontal that can be de detected with the down eye that the one that's horizontal can be detected with the front eye okay so you can either use the front eye or the down eye again each one has its own merits you might want to decide later on which one's better for you okay we'll go back to that arena later on but again that's your task visit all the eight stations come back to the red and then stop moving and don't crash into any of the stations obviously okay so we're gonna look at a few different blocks okay a few different uh, things yeah the first thing I'm gonna look at is a while loop a while loop is is almost like a forever loop except that it runs while a certain condition is true okay well a forever loop would run forever so what do I mean by that for example you might have like while and then let's try and use one of these again these ones are from the sensing so we go to sensing front eye detects red that's where I got it from okay if wall if else wall loops these are from control loops again you'd find them here if while okay so while loop is something like while you've got a certain condition then carry out these steps so almost like forever but you got to have this condition for it to carry out if not you can probably have a command at the bottom of the while loop it will run that command Okay, but it will only run the commands in the while loop while that condition is true. Let's give a certain example. Let's see. Look at this. Now, let's see. Let's try and do this. Okay, so while I'm not detecting red, I'm sorry, I'm not detecting green, I want to drive forward. And the moment I detect green, I want to I want to turn right. And that's it. I'm going to turn right and stop. So how do I do that? So while it doesn't detect green, so I've got front eye detects green. Again, you can scroll and change the colors. So detects green. I'm going to put it in in a not operator. Again, you can get these operators down here. Okay, so you want to invert the condition. You put it into a not operator. So while front eye does not detect green, that's what it means. Okay, bring this down. Okay, while it's not detecting green, I'm going to drive forward. Else, the moment it detects green, I want it to turn right okay and let's see if this works okay so it's driving forward the moment it sees green it turns right okay so that 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 works fine but in this case the wall condition the loop is only running one command inside okay so now i'm going to look at an if else statement now an if else statement is not a loop so it, it basically works for us for a moment so if I've got an if else statement, so if I say, for example, if front eye detects green, what do you want it to do? If you detect green, then you turn right. If not, you just want to drive forward. Let's see if this one works. 
Okay, so if I detect green, I turn right. If not, I drive forward. Let's see if this one works like the if, like the wall loop that we talked earlier. So I'm going forward. Oh no, it's crashing. It's crashing under the, under the green disc. And it is supposed to crash, trust me. It's meant to crash. And that's why I showed you this because I want to explain why it doesn't work, basically. Okay, the reason why it doesn't work is because an if else statement only runs for the moment when the program is started. It's not within a loop. So the moment you start it, and you see that's not being, nothing is being highlighted here. It's activated for that moment only. And after that, once you're driving forward, it's not activated anymore. So this, this if else needs to be within a loop. Okay, it's, it's flipping badly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you can't have an if else unless you've got a forever loop or a while loop. Okay. If not, it only, this, this, this condition only works the moment you just, release you press the play button for that moment after that it's not it doesn't it's not it doesn't hold this condition doesn't make any sense anymore so you don't put an if else condition unless it's within a wall loop or a forever loop okay or some other some other sort of loop so let's see if i've got a while okay, i've got while so i've got let me put my not while front eye is not detecting blue let's have that okay so while it's not detecting this blue then I put an if else, okay. Then if the front eye detects green, turn right. If not, drive forward. And then if it detects blue, then you stop driving. Make sense? So while it's not detecting blue, if it detects green, turn right. If not, drive forward. And then while this condition is not true, which means it detects blue, then you stop driving. So it should come here, turn right, see the blue, and then stop. Okay, let's see if this works. There you go. I see that. That's being highlighted. Detects green, turns right, drives forward. That is being detected. So it's no longer under the not detect blue because it's detecting blue now. It will stop driving. It will go out of the while loop. It will stop driving. All right, so now you know how to use your while loop. You know how to use an if else loop. Okay. And you know how to put a condition inside the, the, the if, you know how to put a condition in the wall. Now, another thing I want to highlight is you can have multiple if else statements within a single if else. So I can actually do, I can have an if else statement and I can put another if else. We call this a nested if else, which basically means you're creating three different conditions. But remember, every time you've got multiple conditions, make sure the conditions do not overlap. Okay, for example, you might have. Let's just use a real life example. I love doing that. All right. So, for example, if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we go out to the beach. If it's Thursday, Friday, we go out swimming. If it's Saturday, Sunday, we go to the movies. So they don't overlap. They're, they're all different days. In this, in this case, you might have if it's green, do this. If it's blue, do this. If it's something else, do that. If it's white space, do something else. Okay. So make sure your conditions don't overlap. Now let's have a look at this. Let's cover all these things. And so now that you know these different blocks. Let's have a look at this map and I'll give you a clue as to how to solve this. Now, just one more thing is you can use your front eye or your down eye. I talked about that, so you can choose. Okay, your, your front eye is gonna, you're gonna basically detect this disc. Your down eye is basically gonna detect this color, okay? Map at the bottom, or which looks like a box, whatever. Okay, which one are you gonna use? All right, let's look at this view from the top. Let's refresh that. Try and, try and observe a pattern, because if you look at this, if you draw a line for for example, like if you connect this line to this corner, okay, you would observe a certain angle here. And if you connect this line to this, you observe a certain angle. So if I came here, if I turn right, I would be in line with the blue. If I turn left, i will be in line with this. Now, try and observe the pattern and see where you should turn when you hit the green. Where you should hit, where you should turn when you hit the blue. Remember, you got to cover all the eight stations. Okay. Once you observe the pattern, you 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 would realize which station comes after which one and which one comes next. It would be automatic once you once you get the pattern. And eventually, once you hit the red, you're gonna stop. So you got to decide what what has to be, which condition has to be within your while loop for your while loop to run. Okay, and what what command has to be outside the wall, wall loop, 
what would be your conditions within the while loop, whether you need a nested if else statement. All right, so that would be three conditions. Figure that out. Shouldn't be that difficult. I think I've spoken way too much than I should have. I've given you far too many clues. So all the best. I look forward to seeing you in tutorial 13 where I'll be going through the solutions. All right, thank you very much for listening.